this is an, an incredible opportunity for Christians to, to show and, and express their uh, identification with Jews, that they are standing by their Jewish brethren. Well, welcome to the podcast today. My name is Jeff and I'm your host. And today's kind of a special edition. We're going to be talking again with our friend, Gidon Ariel. And Gidon is a co-founder of Root Source, has been on our podcast many times. Gidon, welcome back. Thank you very much, Jeff. It's always a pleasure to be here. Well, it's good to have you. And uh, today we want to talk a little bit about, about Kristallnacht, but also, more importantly, about an event that uh, you are inviting participation in. Before we get to the details about that, um, help us out with what Kristallnacht is. Let's just kind of remind our listeners and viewers about that uh, horrible event that took place during the Holocaust. So Kristallnacht happened on November 9th, 1938. 1938 was just a little bit before the Holocaust. What happened was that in Germany, the Nazis were coming to power little by little, and then they came to the conclusion that this is an opportunity for us to run a, uh, a, a government quasi-sponsored pogrom amongst the Jews all over Germany and the areas of Germany that was, in, uh, was controlling. And uh, I, I don't remember what what the, uh, the the rationale was. It really doesn't matter. They could have made something up. But uh, that night, they, the people went on a rampage. The uh, police stood by when the windows of hundreds and hundreds of Jewish-owned uh, businesses, Jewish synagogues, schools, institutions, homes were, were uh, smashed. The homes, they were ransacked. And over 100 Jews were murdered that night. And 30,000 Jews were collected and brought to jails, were actually brought to, to concentration camps. This was the beginning of the use of concentration camps. So it was way before the final solution was applied by the Nazis. But the Nazis, besides wanting to give an opportunity for the the anti their anti semitism to come out and to get, to, get, to to see how it works, they wanted to see how the rest of the world would respond to this, and there was barely any response. So they saw this is an opportunity for to, to for us to move it up a notch, and uh, sadly, what they say the rest is history. After that, the Nazis uh, with another project they tried to see how uh, um, Jews trying to emigrate from Nazi-controlled Germany would be accepted, would be allowed to immigrate, and, and none. There, were, there was the Evian Conference, I believe that was the name of the, the conference, where they, where people from all, where nations from all over the world gathered together to see how they could respond to the, uh, n the Nazi uh, oppression of Jews, and not a single country stood up and said, we will take in Jews. So the Nazis said, okay, if you're not taking them, you don't care about them, we won't, uh, we won't give them to you. And they locked up all the Jews, no more immigration, and then ultimately they killed, murdered six million Jews. It's a, it's a number that is, is really unfathomable. They, they say that six million is a, st one is a murder, and six million is a, is a statistic. Yeah, but uh, this 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 is the uh, this is of course the Holocaust that uh, every every American Jew, no matter what generation, how far away re, re, uh, he is from the Holocaust. My father was a uh, was a, a victim and a survivor of the Holocaust. I'm and uh, so I'm a second generation survivor, as it's called. But all Jews, even even Jews who whose families didn't come from Europe. Are, are scarred with this, and uh, Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, glass, was uh, the beginning, the first shot, if you will, of the Holocaust. 
we are here not to sort of rehash the past, but to shed shed light on this certain uh, thing that happened, and also talk about you know how we can um, how we can sort of acknowledge it, recognize it, give it space, and and you know honor those who who perished in the Holocaust through something that your organization is doing. So tell us about uh, about this and. Let's uh, let our listeners and viewers know what, how they can get involved. Okay. So as uh, some of your viewers might remember, uh, I run a program called Root Source, root-source.com, which is a platform for pro-Israel Christians and Jews to engage with each other primarily by studying the topics, ideas, and concepts and texts that we share in common. So we have hundreds and hundreds of uh, recorded lessons. We have about two dozen Jewish teachers, t uh, tens of thousands of, of Christians around the world that are on our free newsletter. Uh, but the idea of engaging with Christians and helping Christians to learn more about Jews and uh, the Jewish experience is something that uh, that is very close to my heart. Last year, um, I came across on Facebook an initiative that I learned had been going on for about a decade. There was a, uh, and still is, a, uh, a woman who lives in a kibbutz up north whose father was a Holocaust survivor, and she learned the story of Kristallnacht. And she said, wait a second, on that night, hundreds and hundreds of synagogues, the uh, lights were turned off, of course. <laughs> Some of them were, were put ablaze, but the, the, the electric lights were, were, uh, were shut down. And the uh, Germans, the Nazis, of course, tried to turn, keep the lights, keep the lights off in those synagogues. So this uh, woman said, wait a second, if they wanted to turn the lights off in the synagogues, then we're going to show them and we're going to keep the lights on in the synagogues. That is going to be the way for us to counter that our message is going to be you try to, to turn the lights off in synagogues, we're going to keep the lights on in synagogues. So she came up with this idea, and she encouraged people that she knew and communities that she was familiar with and she had some contact with to keep the lights on for one night in that synagogue. So I heard about this last, last year on November 8th, and it sounds like a great idea. I live in a small community, so I ran, ran, I walked and approached the person in charge of my synagogue, and I told him quickly, listen, this, tonight is Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, Lel Habedolach in, uh, in Hebrew. And uh, this idea, this is an idea that's going around all over the world, all over Israel, that you keep the lights on all night. He said, that's a great idea. So we have a small synagogue, a small community. He just didn't turn the lights off, and, uh, and we participated. And then we took a picture of it with the lights on, sent it to that program's website or Facebook group, and that was that. But immediately when I heard this, I've been involved again with, with uh, Christian-Jewish relations for a, a decade or two. I said, this is an, an incredible opportunity for Christians to, to show and, and express their uh, identification with Jews, that they're standing by their Jewish brethren. Because some people, they go all out and they establish uh, foundations to, 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 uh, support, to support the Israel and the Jewish people. Some people come to Israel on a trip. Some people, they maybe put a mezuzah on their home. Some people, re, 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 uh, they subscribe to Root Source and they learn Torah. And, but, but this is an opportunity for people to just keep the lights on. Just don't turn the lights off. And mm -hmm. by this, you are engaging and showing and expressing your identification with the Jewish people. I think it's a, a very low bar of entry for people who hadn't thought about that before. And it's a, a, a great way for people who are connected to Israel, are connected to the Jewish people, to to uh, to connect that way as well again, and uh, and so it's very important. I think it's very important 
to do something to show to show God and to show yourself, to show your family and friends that I stand up for the Jewish people. And this is a way for people to do it, either in their churches, which uh, the uh, initiative that we're doing is called Light Up the Church. That's one word, lightupthechurch.org. But of course, we have an opportunity there for people who are individuals to keep the lights on in their own home, or for Christian-owned businesses to keep the lights on, just like I said. Uh, Jewish businesses were destroyed. Here's an opportunity to stand. If I would have been there, I would have, I would have stood at the at the at the doorpost myself, and uh, and any other uh, Christian initiative or organization that uh, that can do this. So so I'm encouraging people to go to go to that website. We on that website there is information about Kristallnacht. There is a list of the uh, the churches that signed up in order to participate in this initiative. And there, of course, is a, uh, a, 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 a sign-up form for you and your church to, uh, to stand up and be counted in this initiative. Wonderful. Well, we would encourage you, if you're listening, watching, to uh, go to Light Up the Church, right? Lightupthechurch.org. That's exactly right. And you can okay. also find it on, on Facebook. We're, uh, we're running a, a campaign to promote it. This is the first year that we're doing it. We hope that we'll have over 100 churches that will stand up and do it. Right now we have about uh, 30 churches that are already signed up. Uh, we might be as, especially, as surprised for the good and have many more than 100. But next year, remember, I, I started this only uh, a, few, a few months ago. Next yeah. year, with God's help, I think that we'll be able to sign up a lot of uh, partner organizations that will encourage uh, the people in their circle to participate. At lightupthechurch.org. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing that with us, Gidon, and we will do our best to get the word out. And I want to encourage you, if you're a pastor, if you're a Christian business owner, if you just want to keep the lights on at your house uh, as a show of solidarity with uh, the Jewish people in in remembering this horrible night that happened so long ago, you know, uh, the church was was absent uh, that night when Kristallnacht occurred. They did not stand with the Jewish people. And uh, we want to be those who are standing with our brothers, with our sisters, uh, in in the the Jewish uh, the Jewish religion, but also you know anyone who is who is Jewish who has been impacted by this horrific horrific thing called the Holocaust. And you know what? If you're a survivor, you know a survivor. Even if you're not related to one, uh, if you're Jewish, you've been impacted by this. And so uh, you know we we want to stand with you, and and it's wonderful for us to be able to to partner in this way. Gadon, thanks for the opportunity and for letting us know about it. And we hope that uh, we'll be able to visit with you again. Thank you very much, Jeff, and uh, thank you all your, to all of your listeners as well. Thanks for watching. You can listen to this entire podcast on your favorite audio podcast platform. Find the link below. And while you're at it, don't forget to click subscribe and follow us on Facebook so you can stay connected to First Century Foundations.